Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry and today I'm going to show you how I made these crochet flower skirts for my crochet dolls. This skirt is made to fit my realistic body crochet doll, which you can find at the link in the description below, but you can customize the size as much as you like. In part 1, I'll show you how to make the petals of the skirt, and in part 2, I'll show you how to add the trim and the leaves. First of all, let's talk about the yarn you'll need for this project. You can customize the colors of your flower as much as you like, but you'll need at least three main colors. The main flower color, the trim, and the leaves. You could get away with using the same color for the trim and the petals, but if you do, it'll be tougher to distinguish between each petal, so if you want it all in one color, try using a slightly darker shade for the trim. Another thing to note is the weight of the yarn that you're using. You could use pretty much any yarn, but a thinner yarn will produce a lighter, more delicate petal that won't add too much bulk to the doll, and a thicker yarn will produce a heavier, stiffer petal that'll be very bulky. So choose your yarn based on the look you want for the skirt. For this project, I'll be using Orchid for my main petal color, Violet for the trim, and Spring Green for the leaves, all from Red Heart Super Saver. I'm using a heavier yarn because I want a big bulky ball gown type skirt that will keep its shape. But if you want a more loose flowing skirt that has a slimmer silhouette, use a lighter yarn. Some other things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook. You can use pretty much any size hook for this project, but if you use a bigger hook, you'll have a lacier look to your petals. And if you use a smaller hook, the holes in the work won't be as noticeable. For my doll, I'll be using a size E hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm going to use some bobby pins to keep track of the first and last stitch of my row. And if you'd like a written version of this flower skirt, I've made a pattern available in my Ravelry store, which can be found in the description below. This project doesn't need to be exact though, so I won't go into too much detail in this tutorial. This is just to show you the basic technique so you can customize your flower however you like. But if you really want to know the exact things I did for my project, check out the written pattern. First, using my main color of yarn, I'm going to create a slip knot. Then I'm going to chain 6 to begin my first petal foundation. If you want to make your petals longer, you should chain more than 6 to begin each petal foundation. Chain the length you want the petal to be, minus half the width you want the petal to be. Just bear in mind that this will affect how many stitches are in your petal. Next, I'm going to slip stitch into each of these chains. So first I'll chain 1 for the first stitch, then slip stitch in the third chain from the hook and into each of the remaining chains to create the other side of the petal foundation. And now I'll make the space in between the petals, so I'm going to chain 8 for the space in between. If you want to make your petals wider, you should chain more than 8 for the space in between the petals, but again, bear in mind that this will affect how many stitches are in your petal. Now I'm going to repeat that until I've made as many petal foundations as I want petals. I'll continue until I have 6 petal foundations total, since that's how many petals I want to make. I want to have about 3 petals in each tier of petals, so I'm making the amount of petals divisible by 3.
For the last petal, I'll skip the eight chains in between. Since this is the last petal, I don't need to make a space in between. So I'm ending my foundation after my slip stitches. To begin the next row, I'm going to chain one for the first stitch. Single crochet in the third chain from the hook. And in the next two stitches. Then I'm going to increase the next four stitches. These are the top four middle stitches of the petal foundation. So if you made your petal with more stitches, you might need to single crochet for longer until you reach the top middle. So I've done the four increases. Next I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches until I get to the end of the petal foundation. Once again, if you made your petals with more stitches, you might need to single crochet for longer until you reach the bottom of the petal. Next I'm going to single crochet into the first two chains of the eight chains I made in between the first and second petal. and then skip the next four chains. These are the middle four stitches of the chain, so if you made wider petals, the middle four might be in a different spot. So next, I'm gonna single crochet into the last two chains of the eight chains in between. Then once again, I'm going to single crochet around the next petal until I get to the top middle four stitches, where I'm going to increase. So I finished my increases, now once again I'm going to single crochet into the next four stitches until I reach the bottom of the next petal.
and I'm going to repeat the same thing until I've done the last petal. So in the next row, I'll chain one for the first stitch, and single crochet in the third stitch from the hook. Then single crochet in the next four stitches. Next I'll do the same thing as I did in the last row, and I'll increase the next four stitches at the top middle of the petal. Then single crochet in the next six stitches until I reach the bottom of the next petal. Then once again, skip the four stitches in between the petals. Then single crochet in the next six stitches to start the next petal. And increase four again at the top. and single crochet the next six stitches to the bottom. And I'm gonna repeat that until I get to the last petal.
and I'm basically going to repeat that for the rest of the petal until the trim, to keep adding rows of petals. But to make sure the two petals on each side of the row stay the same size, I'm going to skip two stitches each at the beginning and end of the row. So chain one for the first stitch, And this time, instead of single crocheting in the third stitch from the hook to start the row, I'm going to single crochet in the fifth stitch of the row to skip the first two stitches. Then single crochet in the next four stitches, so that once again I have six stitches before my increase. Next, I'll increase the four stitches at the top middle of the petal. Then single crochet in the next six stitches until I reach the bottom of the petal. Then skip the four stitches in between the petals. And single crochet the next six stitches to start the next petal. And I'm going to repeat that until I get to the last petal. At the end of the last petal, I have two stitches left, so I'm just going to skip those two stitches and start the next row. Continue that pattern until the petals reach the length you want. I added three more rows. And at the end of the last row you make for the petal, change colors to the trim color. This is where I'm going to end my flower and make my trim, so I went ahead and changed to my darker shade of yarn. Before we go on though, let's talk about some other ways you can customize your flower. If you want to make the petals get gradually larger, you can leave some of the petals out every second row, so that all the smaller petals end up on the same side. I'm not going to do this for this project, because it works best with a lot of tiers of petals and I'm only making two tiers for this flower but I'll show you how anyway. So I would be leaving out groups of three petals because I want to have about three petals per tier in my flower. You can do this at any point while making your petals. So to show you how to do this, I'm gonna end the row here in between the fourth from the last petal and the third from the last petal. So two stitches before the space left by the four skipped stitches of the previous row. I'm gonna end the row like I normally would and skip those last two stitches and turn the work and start the next row. Then do another regular row, going all the way to the end of the row to the other side. And then do another row of leaving out petals so that all the smaller petals are all on the same side. Continue doing this until only three petals remain in the row. This method works really well if you just want to make a regular flower instead of a flower skirt, 
or if you want the top tier of petals to be smaller than the bottom petals. If you want, you can skip this step and make all the petals the same size, which is what I'm going to do for my doll. Another way you could customize is with color changes. For these petals, I did a gradient from yellow to magenta. For this one, I added a few stitches of pink blush to a mostly white flower. And for this one, I just used a couple different shades of purple. There's a lot of different ways to do this, so get creative. And of course, you can customize your flower to several different shapes. If you want the size of the flower to get bigger and bell out, add more increases to the top of each petal. And if you want the petals to get smaller, either increase fewer times or skip more stitches in between petals. You can also chain more or fewer in the foundation row to shape the flower differently. For this flower, for instance, I made extra long, thin petals by making the foundation of each petal way longer, and I didn't chain any in between the petals. Then when I was working the rows, I skipped four chains at the middle for the first two rows, then at the third row I skipped ten chains in between each petal instead, and five on each side of the row. Then I just did normal rows of skipping four in between each petal, and decreasing two on each side. This made the petals stay thin at the top, but widen at the bottom. This project is starting to get long, so let's continue in the next video. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are, give it a like and share it on social media. If you want to support me in making new videos, donate to my Patreon. If you do, you can get some exclusive perks, like seeing my videos earlier than everybody else. Find more information at patreon.com slash fairyrings. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye!